my name is Brian and I'm a technical support engineer here at ScreenMeet. In today's video, we'll be covering the ServiceNow and ScreenMeet integration utilizing the ScreenMeet Live product. Now, just as a note before we move forward, your organization may utilize the UI 16 version of ServiceNow, or it may utilize the agent workspace, depending on your preference. For this example, we will cover the agent workspace, then we will double back to the UI 16 view to show you the slight differences. To start, we are going to need to initiate the need for a session. So in this case, we will simulate that an end user needs assistance with some software on their machine, and they also need some assistance with their keyboard. Your sessions may derive from a chat, an email, a support portal ticket, or other method. For this example, we'll go through a ServiceNow support portal. To start, we'll go ahead here and request some service by creating an incident inside of our portal. In this case, we're just simulating the user's perspective. We've gone ahead here and submitted the incident. We'll get the incident ID here. We'll take this incident ID and go to our agent workspace and refresh. And we'll see this new incident that I just opened as the end user. We'll click on that to open it. You'll see your standard incident information here, but over to the right, you'll see an icon here that allows you to open up the screen meet widget. So simply click on this icon here and this will show you the screen me options. For UI 16, this will be in your service desk incident. Click on the incident number. And instead of having an icon over here to the right, you'll have a toolbar that has the screen meet tab. We'll hop back over to our agent workspace here and continue this flow. So maybe we've determined that this person needs some assistance via a live call. Maybe we need to chat with them using our microphone. Maybe we need to see what's happening on their machine. We'll go ahead here and start by initiating the live session. To do that, we'll simply click on the live call button. And as a note moving forward, your organization may have different settings than mine does, depending on how your screen meet administrator has configured it. For example, some of these options may not be visible. Some of them may be required by default. So just make a note that your organization may have a slightly different setup than mine does. To proceed, we'll go ahead here and click on record live session and then create session. You'll be greeted with a couple different options here. The first one is our pin. The second one is our live call URL. So in this case, I've determined that this person needs some assistance via a live call. So I'll go ahead here and click on copy. And in this workflow or in this use case, I'll go ahead here and just say, please join us on our live product and paste this URL to them. So they'll see this inside of the service ticket within the support desk. Your workflow might require you to pass this link via a chat, email, phone call, or other method as well. Now that we've given the link to the user, there are a couple options to join the session. We can either join the call inside of this window, or we can join the call inside of a pop-out. For the purposes of this example, we'll go ahead here and just use the pop-out window. The first thing that we'll see here is a disclaimer that the call will be recorded. This is because we did enable recording in the beginning of the session. Next, we have our microphone on and off. This allows you to unmute or mute your microphone depending on your needs. And when you unmute the microphone and you speak into it, you'll see the red level raised to the level of your voice. And that just allows you to make sure that your microphone is working as expected. We have a camera on and off functionality as well. Simply clicking on this will turn on your camera. And next we have a set background image option. So this allows you to set blurring or allows you to set a virtual background that your screen meet administrator may have uploaded for your organization. Next, we have our device settings. This just allows you to change your input and output devices. You may have multiple different webcams, multiple microphones, and multiple speaker setups. So you may want to choose the one that is best suited for this need. We'll go ahead here and press join session to join the session. And just a side note, you do not have to enter your name as the agent. This is automatically pulled from the ServiceNow integration. But we'll just continue here by pressing the join button. And we'll first see this warning that the microphone is muted. This is because we joined the session with our microphone off. For the purposes of this example, we'll just continue without audio for now. Starting at the top, we have our disclaimer that the meeting is being recorded. This will only show up when the meeting is being recorded as we enabled it earlier in the session. Next, we have our information pane. This just gives you the session ID. This is a unique ID that is generated on each ScreenMeet session. We have our description, which automatically pulls in the incident number uh, from the ServiceNow integration. We have our pin and our URL that we saw in our widget over here to the right a little bit earlier. To show you the next option, we are going to have a end user join on another device. 
Now that the end user has joined, you'll see a new option show up that allows you to change the layout of the ScreenMeet Live product. So you can either hone in on a given user or you can change to a grid-based layout. We have a full screen option that just maximizes this tab. We have our microphone on and off and camera on and off functionality as well. Next, we have our screen share option. If you click on this option right here, you'll have a couple different methods of sharing what is currently visible on your screen. So an end user may want to share their entire screen, their window, or a given Chrome tab, depending on their needs. For this example though, we'll go ahead here and swap over to our end user's device and have the end user share their screen, in this case where they need some assistance. We can see here that the end user is now sharing a web page with us. So in this case, we may point them to a given part of the page. We may start our troubleshooting process or we may proceed as needed. Uh, this allows you to share a given screen, monitor, or Chrome tab uh, from the end user to the agent or vice versa, depending on your needs. You can also annotate on the user's screen share. So if I go ahead here and click on the three dots from the end user screen share, I can click on annotate and I can actually point to given options on the screen. And this shows to all the meeting participants. So you may want to show them a particular part of the page. You may want to point to a given part. This just helps you to be able to visually do that. Inside of the annotation functionality, you have options to change the color of the drawing, the size, you can undo the last drawn action, or you can completely clear all the drawings or stop the drawing as needed. Next, we'll show you some basic functionality of using the ScreenMeet Live product on a mobile device. So we'll go ahead here and join as a end user on a mobile device to show something physical that I may need some assistance with. So you can see here I've joined the session as a end user and I'm on my mobile device and sharing my back camera. So in this case, maybe I wanna show something physical to the agent. I can turn on my back camera. I can show them whatever I'm looking at. I can interact with it. Maybe I can say that this key right here isn't working. And maybe as the agent, I'm noticing that the key is broken or potentially malfunctioning. We'll go ahead here and leave as the end user's mobile device as we are done with the screen sharing portion of this session. We'll proceed on to the options pane. If you click on the three dots down here, you'll see some information that we've already covered a little bit. Some of the options include the meeting information and the active speaker layout, which we saw a little bit earlier. The reason why this is in this options pane is because when this window is used in a lower resolution environment, you'll see that those icons actually are not visible. It only will show those icons when it has enough screen real estate to display them. Uh, so in this case, they are duplicated since we've actually given this tab a lot of room to breathe. But in this case, you can click on the three dots if you'd like to see these in a lower resolution environment. Next, we have our chat. If you click on chat, you can type to the end user or the end user can type to you or any meeting participants can discuss as needed here. You can also attach and send files either to the agent uh, or from agent to the meeting participants, depending on your need. We also have our full screen and background options that we covered a little bit earlier, as well as our video and audio devices, followed by our advanced settings option. So if you click on the settings here, you'll see a few different options that we have not seen just yet. The first one is audio enabled, so you can either turn audio on or off. Guest video enabled, which allows you to either allow or deny the guests the ability to share their video stream. Allow request to join, which is a option that we saw in the widget a little bit earlier. So if you wanna go back retroactively and enable this setting, if you didn't enable it at the beginning, you can do so here. Recording, which is similar to the previous setting. If you did not start the session with recording, but you decide that you do need to record, you can click on this button here. Follow active speaker, switches the video to show whoever is currently talking. And you also have the ability to flip the camera image as well. Lastly, you have language localization. So if you need to change the language that is displayed within the ScreenMeet Live platform, you can do so here. Next, we have our audio and video. This just allows you to change your input and output devices if you need to after the session has already started. And it also allows you to test your speaker as well. We have our video option as well, which also has a stream resolution option that allows you to downscale your resolution. This could be helpful in a low bandwidth environment or if you're having network issues, you can downscale the stream resolution if needed. Lastly, here we have our background. This is the same functionality that we saw a little bit earlier. This just allows you to change your virtual background based on your needs. Next, we have our people or our participants. So if you click on this icon here, this will show you all the participants inside of the session. Now that the end user has joined, I can click on the three dots and I can either pin their view, promote them to the host of the session, or kick them out of the session.
Next, we have our other sessions option, which allows you to create a new session utilizing another ScreenMate product. So for example, if you're licensed to utilize live and remote support, you can create a new remote support session here and connect to the end user's device and do a remote control session. Next, we have our option to stop the recording. So if the recording was already started at the beginning of the session, you can come here and stop the recording as needed. Next, we have our hang up option here. This just allows you to either leave or close the session. Uh, closing the session is permanent in nature, whereas leaving the meeting allows you to rejoin if needed. And lastly, we have our participants, chat, and settings options here. We've already covered these three as they are part of the settings pane right here. Though if you are in a higher resolution environment, you'll have quick access options to utilize those there. This covers running a ScreenMate live session with Inside of ServiceNow. So we'll go ahead here and just hang up the session and press close meeting. The agent will see a post session feedback rating that they can leave. So if they had a good experience, they can leave five stars and they can leave some information about the session. Now that we're done with the session, we'll go ahead here and close out of it. We'll go ahead here and refresh our incident inside of the agent workspace. So we've gone ahead here and assisted the end user with their keyboard and their software. And we may want to review the ScreenMeet session after it's happened. To do so, you can click on the ScreenMeet Sessions tab right here. This will include some basic information about the session, such as the duration, when it ended, and the session code. But to get more information, you can click on the incident URL right here. And once you're in this page, you can view more information about the session, such as the pin, the duration, the URL, the recording link if recording was enabled, etc. Lastly, we have our session logs. So if you click on session logs here, this includes a granular listing of everything that has happened within inside of this session. So you can see when the room was entered, when camera access was requested, when people leave, when different settings panes are interacted with. So this is just a granular way to see everything that happened inside of the live session. Hopping back over to UI 16, if you go to your incidents here, the view is very similar to what we showed you a little bit earlier. So if we scroll down here, you have a screen meet sessions tab that you can click on. You can click on the incident URL inside of the description. And you have your same information here and your same session log tab down here that you can view the information in. Lastly, we have our attachments, which is listed here in the attachments tab. This will include any session recordings or any transferred files that may have been transferred during the session. Subsequently, in our agent workspace, we have the same attachments tab with the same information. This covers the ServiceNow and ScreenMeet integration for ScreenMeet Live. Definitely let us know if you have any questions. We'd be glad to assist. Thanks and have a good day.